I'm Amit Sengupta and this is a video on geography brought to you by Edupedia World. In this video, we're going to read about latitudes and longitudes. What is latitudes and longitudes? These are imaginary lines which are placed on a globe. They are not some real lines that you will find them on Earth. These are imaginary lines that are made on globe. Here is a brief content that we will be covering in this video. At first, we'll try to understand what is globe. And second, we'll understand the latitudes and some of the important latitudes. And then we'll read about the heat zones of the Earth. After that, we'll read about the longitudes. And then we'll see the relation of longitude and time. And in the end, we will finish this video by understanding what is standard time and its importance. So, with no further ado, let's begin. The first topic is globe. So what is a globe? It is a model of the earth. A globe is a true model of the earth. It's a miniature form of model. You must have seen it in your classroom to get an idea. Now globes are of different size and types. Some are big ones and then some are small ones. Now globes are not fixed. It can be rotated. And on the globe you will find countries, continents and oceans in their correct size. You will see some imaginary lines on a globe. It is difficult to describe the location of a point on a sphere like the Earth. So that is where this imaginary lines come into play. We need certain points of reference and lines to find out the location of a place. So on a globe you will notice that a needle is fixed through the globe in a tilted manner which is called its axis and then two points on the globe through which the needle passes are two poles which are North Pole and South Pole. And then there is another imaginary line running on the globe that divides it into two equal parts. This line is known as the equator. So this is a brief description of what a globe is. Now let's move on to the next topic latitudes. Always remember latitudes are horizontal imaginary line. I repeat, they are horizontal imaginary line. They are not vertical. They are horizontal. Equator is a latitude which divides the globe in two equal parts. Now it is also the longest latitude and pretty much visible on any form of map. And if you look at the world map, this equator passes through 13 countries. Now after dividing the globe in two equal parts, the northern half of the earth is known as the northern hemisphere and the southern half is known as the southern hemisphere. Now that we have made a division, just remember that all the horizontal lines that lie to the north of the equator are called north latitudes. Similarly, all lines that lie at the south of the equator are called south latitudes. And usually these latitudes are denoted with a value or a sign which means north or south. So with that you can easily figure out whether a particular latitude is a south latitude or a north latitude. Now this is a very important point. Always remember as we move away from the equator the size of the latitude decreases. As we know that the earth is round, I mean the earth is not perfectly round but it is round. It is more of a spherical shape and in a sphere usually the middle portion is a bit expanded. Now on the similar principle you imagine the globe or the planet Earth. It is a bit expanded in the middle and that makes the equator the longest latitude. And as we move away from the equator and move towards the North Pole or the South Pole, the size of the sphere reduces and that is the reason the size of the latitude decreases. I hope you're understanding what I'm trying to say. Now there are some important latitudes that you must remember. Let's go through them in the slide. Now moments back we have read that at zero degrees we have the equator which divides the globe into two equal parts. And also remember equator is the longest latitude. Similarly if we go below the equator that is towards the southern side at 23 and a half degrees we have the Tropic of Capricorn. And if you look at the map, Tropic of Capricorn passes through the continents of South America, Africa and Australia. Now at 23 and a half degrees north, 
we have the topic of cancer and you must remember this one in particular because it passes through India and in India topic of cancer passes through the states of Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, West Bengal, Tripura and Mizoram. I'll just show it to you all of this on a map. At 66.5 degrees south we have the Antarctic Circle and yes this is the land of the penguins. Similarly at 66.5 degrees north we have the Arctic Circle and this region is located at the far northern parts of Europe, Russia, Alaska and Canada. Keep these important latitudes in hand. It will be of lot of help when you do your map reading on an atlas. Let's move on to the next topic, heat zones of the earth. Now the heat zones of the earth are divided into three zones. They are torrid zone, temperate zone and frigid zone. Let's go through each of these zones in brief. The first one is torrid zone. Now this area lies in between the Tropic of Cancer in the north to the Tropic of Capricorn in the south. And the reason it's called a torrid zone is because if you look at the map in this region the sun shines overhead. In other words the sun rays are direct on this region and due to that this region receives maximum heat. That's why the people who lives in this region can see the sun exactly on top of their head during noon. Now the other names given to this region are equatorial region and tropical region. In between Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn we have the equator. That's why this region is famously known as equatorial region. And the reason it's called tropical region is because you'll find a lot of tropical rainforest and evergreen forest. So that is where the word tropical comes in. And the second zone is temperate zone. Now this area lies in between the Tropic of Cancer in the north and the Arctic Circle in the north. Now this zone also exists in the southern hemisphere in between the area of Tropic of Capricorn and Antarctic Circle in the south. And the reason this region is called temperate is because the sun never shines overhead in this region. The sun rays fall in a slanting manner. It is never direct. That's why the angle of sun rays goes on decreasing as we go towards the poles. Now because of the name, here the temperature is moderate throughout the year. That's why you'll see United States, Canada, then all the countries of Europe, Northern Africa, Middle East, Japan, New Zealand. All these countries are located entirely within the temperate zone. That's why the temperatures in these regions are generally moderate rather than extremely hot or cold. And due to that, it also makes these places a perfect destination for tourism. And the third type of zone is frigid zone. Now the other word for frigid is frozen. So this zone lies in between the Arctic Circle and the North Pole in the Northern Hemisphere. And in the Southern Hemisphere, it lies in between Antarctic Circle and South Pole. Here the sun does not rise much above the horizon. And in the previous slides, we have discussed the reason as to why. The sun rays fall directly on the equator. As we move away from the equator towards the North Pole and the South Pole, the sun rays decreases. Now the temperature in these regions are extremely cold. Or you can say these regions are permanently frozen. So in this region, all you'll find is ice and glaciers. So this was all about the different heat zones of the Earth. The next topic is what are longitudes? These are vertical imaginary lines. So always remember latitudes are horizontal imaginary lines. These are vertical imaginary lines. Now the main objective of longitudes are to fix the position of a place on a globe. And with the help of latitude, that is longitude along with the help of latitude, we can locate any place on earth. And even if two places have same longitude and latitude coordinates, it will differ in terms of northern and southern hemisphere. So you will just have to keep a track of that letter N and S, which stands for north and south. Usually there is a line of reference, which is a permanent fixed line that runs from north, from north pole to the south pole. It is also known as meridians of longitude. And the distance between these lines are required to determine the time of a particular place. 
In the next slide of this video, we will learn how to calculate time of a particular place with the help of its longitude. Just like we have a zero degree equator which is the longest latitude, similarly we have a zero degree longitude which is called the prime meridian. And from this point, we count 180 degree eastward as well as 180 degree westward to form a 360 degree circle. So this was all about the longitudes. We move on to the next topic, relation of longitude and time. So always remember, Earth rotates from west to east, which is anti-clockwise. And that is the reason the Sun moves from east to west each day. Now how in the previous slide we have read that the zero degree longitude is called as prime meridian. Therefore all the places which are east of Greenwich will be ahead of Greenwich time and the west of the Greenwich side will be behind the Greenwich time. Now let's learn how to calculate the differences in time. I mean if you were to go from one country to another, how were you to determine the differences in time? Now we know that Earth rotates 360 degree in 24 hours. That means it takes one entire day for Earth to rotate 360 degree. And just remember, there's a difference between rotation and revolution. Many people tend to get confused. So rotation means going around in its own axis and revolution means going around the sun. Anyways, so when we say Earth rotates 360 degrees in 24 hours, that means in one hour, the Earth will move 15 degrees. Similarly, it will take 4 minutes for 1 degree. You simply have to do a little math. 360 divided by 24 is 15 degree and then 1 hour has 60 minutes so you again divided by 15 you'll get 4 minutes which means 1 degree in 4 minutes. So before calculating the time of a particular place you will have to wait for 12 noon in Greenwich because that's when the calculation will make sense. Now if you put 15 degree east of Greenwich that's going to be 60 minutes ahead because we have just calculated that it takes 1 hour for a 15 degree rotation. And similarly, 15 degrees west of Greenwich will be 60 minutes behind. So now you just have to look at the degree of the longitude and keep on adding it with the 15 degree value so that you can calculate the respective hour and minute. So that's how we calculate time of a particular place from Greenwich. We now come to the last topic of this video. What is standard time? It refers to the local time of any place. For example, the time that India has adopted for the entire country is known as the Indian Standard Time. Now remember this, the longitude 82.5 degree east. So by east we mean east of Greenwich. Now this particular longitude is the standard meridian which passes through the city of Allahabad. And if we do the same calculation what we did in the previous slide, we will find that 82.5 degree is equal to five and a half minutes which is five hours and thirty minutes which means we are five hours thirty minutes ahead of Greenwich. So whatever the time Greenwich has right now you just have to add five and a half minutes and that will be the Indian Standard Time. Now why do we need a standard time? Why is it important? The first point is to prepare train timetable. Now train moves from one place to another which means it will cross certain longitudes. So when you cross longitudes, the degree of the longitude will change and that is going to affect the calculation of time. So if there is a variation in time, there's going to be a huge chaos in preparing the timetable of a train. Now similarly, standard time is important for conducting national and international businesses. For example, if you work during daytime in India, we know that in United States it's going to be night. Of course, the business over there will not be as proactive as it is in India. Therefore, by following the standard time of that particular place, we can adjust our business cycle and then share work responsibility and as well as keep a track of the business growth. You just have to imagine it like a unified timekeeping system. Just like how there is a clock in your house and every member in the family keeps a track of their time with, with respect to that main clock of the house. Similarly, the Indian standard time is like the main clock of the entire nation and everyone has to adjust their time cycle with that main clock because that is how accountability and responsibility can be monitored. 
So now I hope you're well aware of why we need latitudes and longitudes and how do we calculate time and what is the importance of having such imaginary lines. I hope you found this video informative and as usual thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.